Welcome to And That's When I Realized, the truth and comedy of midlife with me, Susan Dolce. And me, Leon Dyer. We are two good friends navigating the twists and turns of that middle part of life, and we are laughing our way through it. Don't get us wrong. It's not all that funny all the time. There's so much we are unprepared for. Adult children, changing bodies, aging parents. We want you to know that you are not alone in these challenges. So sit back, get a front row seat as we share true life stories with a fresh perspective and just a pinch of irreverence. And that's when I realized it starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to And That's When I Realized. I'm Leon Dyer. And I'm Susan Dolce. And this is a show where we are talking about the truth and comedy of midlife. So Susan and I are best friends and we get together usually every Friday, although that hasn't been happening because of our schedule. But, you know, we share the joys and the challenges and the laughs and we discuss all those things that friends share. So I don't know about you, but we thought that by the time we hit our mid fifties, we would have life kind of figured out. (laughs) But it turns out that that's not what happened. So in today's show, we're talking about the truth and comedy of disappointment, how we process it, how we understand it, and how we move beyond the disappointment we experience in our lives. So grab a cup of coffee, a glass of iced tea, and join us. Hey, Susan. We can start by saying, uh, if you are tuning in to hear uh, about pelvic floor health today, (laughs) and you're disappointed that we are not talking about pelvic floor health, we are very disappointed (laughs) that um, our guests that were scheduled for today had to reschedule for November. So we're still going to have that show, but it's just not today. So I'm disappointed. Yes. Well, hence our topic, actually, when we, we get that Susan was, Susan was in the midst of life happening and she sends a text. Okay, they can't make it. I'm like, oh, well, that's disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So do you have a date, Susan, when they, when they will be on? Um, uh, we're hoping for November 11th November. Is, is, the, is the plan. So if that so, happens, yes. we will, we will, um, put that on social media. We will get that out there. We'll, um, because again, um, we would really love to have your questions. You can submit those to uh, support at susandolci at gmail.com. Um, if there's any questions, it's uh, going to be, um, Heather Dibke is um, actually in the process of getting her PhD in um, women's, uh, I don't know the exact title. And Dr. Crawford is an expert in women's um, uh, pelvic floor health. And they have a program that's called Pelphilates or Philates, I'm not sure how it's pronounced yet. Um, and uh, it's a set of exercises is that women can mm-hmm. do to strengthen their pelvic floor and a whole, whole host of other things, but two yeah. experts and um, we are not experts. We have lots of questions, but we would love to hear um, any questions you would like to have asked. Yeah. So Yeah, it's not one of those subjects that, you know, you really like to talk about, but it's, you know, it's well, that's the problem. Things. Nobody talks about it. Yeah. It's well, like, like, it's exactly like when you were a kid, like a teen, well, before your teens, you know, and, you know, your cousins would always talk about, or my aunts, and they always talk about, um, um, oh my gosh, I forgot what they called it. Like aunt Betty or aunt somebody is yeah. arriving and I never knew. And it was a horrible thing. And I didn't know who this person was and why was it coming? And Yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't think I want to visit this person. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, yeah, disappointment. I think it was called the present. I was like, it was like, the oh, present? your, present, your yeah, present's coming. My... I was like, it's not a gift. Or maybe it's yeah, right. Actually, um, we are so digressing now. But um, <laughs> we are. I actually um, listened to a podcast um, of how your menstrual cycle actually is a gift for you or to you or with you or something. 
yeah, I, I didn't find that personally myself, but it's there. Out yeah. there. So it it's, it's, it's a distant memory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. We're now in hot flashes. Yeah. Anyways, okay, um, back to disappointment. Disappointment. So, so Susan, I'm going to ask you right off. What has been a disappointment of late? Um, if you can well, share, if you can't make something up. Uh, well, no, I, I saw something on Facebook today that oh. just, I was like, oh, this is so this is exactly how I feel. And it said that... Um, 2022 is four months away. No, it's, let me, let me, let me rephrase it. It's like, I wish time were linear again, because 2022 is only four months away and I'm still stuck in 2020. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's exactly how I feel. Like 21 has been this <clears throat> weird blur of disappointments. Um, you know, like I just, I, I think we all were hoping, you know, that the pandemic would just disappear and, and there would be this like off switch and life would go back to normal. And, um, and I remember when I got my second vaccine, I cried, I cried. Cause I was like, oh, mm -hmm. things are going to be changing. You know, life yeah. is going to be. And, and so, yeah, it, I guess I expected something much greater than, I mean, it was an unrealistic expectation. I mean, you don't have a virus, you know, invade, the planet and not, not, um, you know, morph and not mutate into new viruses. Right. The hope is mm -hmm. right. That uh, the, the thinking is that it's going to continue like to get weaker and weaker and weaker because a virus doesn't want to kill its host. Mm -hmm. right? So that eventually right. becomes something that is, you know, like cold flu and COVID season. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that just that whole concept of time and feeling like, I've lost a year. No, I feel like I've lost two years of my life. Well, and events that have happened in your life, Susan. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm pulling on my coach's cap right now. Okay, I'll send you my <laughs> bill after. But, but things that have happened in the past, like in the, the last how many months, like year and a half mm -hmm. that have happened just in your life alone, it's hard to process them when we're still living in this, like I, I call it make-believe world but it's not. Yeah. I mean, reality is happening. This is life. But I think there are, and I think eventually when we get back out of things sort of like normal, whatever that looks like, then we're going to be like, wow, that happened. And that happened. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and then the processing starts. <clears throat> well, I, I have, yeah, because so uh, my mom passed away November 8th of 2020. Um, and I mean, I know everybody's like, oh, it's the first year, you know, the first year is always, is always hard, but it's weird. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it doesn't, I, my, I've lost my dad. It didn't feel like this. I've lost my brother. It didn't feel like this. It, it feels like there, there's so much grief, like just in the world, like there's just yes. so much heaviness in the world right now, um, you know, between earthquakes and floods and hurricanes, hurricanes and, and, yeah. and, and pandemics and fires. And it's just like that. I don't, it's almost like I don't have the energy to actually grieve. Yeah. And that's exactly. And I think that, I mean, while other events are happening, you turn the news on and, you know, you can go no, alphabetical. No. To, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, for whatever reason, this seems um, more, it's more of a challenge to move through. It seems more tangible. More, now, I, I have a friend that actually, um, they just lost their house because mm -hmm. of a fire. Um, well, almost a month ago in California. And I mean, to them, forget the pandemic is just a, you know, a little blip in there in their psyche you know, right now, right now it's like, what do we do? However, that being said, they're navigating through um, losing a house, finding temporary housing during a pandemic. So yeah, it's just, there's a lot. I think there's going to be a lot of processing after. Yeah, so 
not to be total Debbie Downers, because we, Downer. <laughs> we do actually, we, we have um, some talking points that we're, we will get to on how to deal with disappointment and how not to let yeah. it, like, 100%. so we're not, we're not just going to sit here and, no. and talk about, it. right. Yeah, exactly. Just, yeah. In case you're, in case I mean, you're like, oh my God, I can't listen to him right now. Cause they're so sad. No, we've yeah. got, we've got some pointers to how to deal with it. Yeah, please don't turn the channel yet. <laughs> and I'm not going to talk poorly about any industry or any one person, I promise. However, I am going to going to give a huge shout out to um, a great friend. He told me he's um, on the West Coast while we we're on the East Coast season, and um, he listens to us. Oh, thank you, friend. Know. So yes, so hello, Ian. I he said, please don't mention me. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you asked me yeah. the question. So mm -hmm. um, I mean, and it, it, that's just. I, I can't think off the top of my head of one thing that was really, well, I, I can say, you know, we've been trying to get um, a visa for my son-in-law. That's, still, yeah. that's probably been my biggest dis disappointment mm -hmm. in the last few years. Um, but because you know, in, they, yeah, because they live in another country. Right. So. And yeah. um, so that's just been disappointing for our entire family. Um, but, yeah. you know, we're managing and it's, um, uh, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen in the future. It's just not happening out right mm -hmm. happening right now. But what about you? Well, actually, the day that um, I got your text, which was last Wednesday, I believe, correct? That, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, about our show, which was disappointing. Um, I also got the, the kind of the printout version of how to get into Canada and what to do and how to get back into the U.S. So, um, yeah, it doesn't look like I will be going to Canada. Oh, um, your, you mean your trip to the, you guys have yeah. your trip planned and that's, you can, won't be we able won't to. Be gone. Yeah. Because we're actually where we live, we're in a tourist area mm -hmm. and um, we have this event that's happening where uh, too many people are coming to our town. And oh, the so fair. Kind of a, the fair. If you've never heard of Freiburg, if you've never heard of Freiburg, Maine, which I had never heard of Freiburg, Maine until I met Leon. And then suddenly I met all these people who were from Freiburg, Maine. <laughs> but um, uh, the a huge portion of the country descends on tiny little Freiburg every October for October, right? First week of our, yeah, for an agricultural fair, which um, will be happening this year. Mm, yes, which might be one of my disappointments. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, those are probably some of my bigger disappointments, like currently. But, you know, just the past year I don't even know how long I keep going back like oh, um 2020 was a huge um bag of disappointment not mm -hmm. just with events but with how people were responding to situations mm -hmm. just yeah. disappointed me and um yeah I you know I just like come on people get, yeah, there was a get huge a lack of civility yeah huge lack of civility people I, couldn't have uh, conscious conversations and open um, civil de debate and discord. It was, everybody is like, got their team. And well, <laughs> well, and also, I mean, I'm, it, you know, I had a, I'm not gonna say a front row seat. I think I was in the back seat. I was in the car for sure of um, a situation where a group were, they were not able to handle the disappointment mm. of um, events not happening. And they caused this immense, I mean, it's still a ripple within a community that I am a member of. And yes, I was disappointed that the event didn't happen, but I was more disappointed in how they were reacting mm -hmm. and how it transpired and how it's, I mean, for, so for me, that disappointment was probably more earth shattering than all the other stuff that's happened. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, 2020. Who has a year? Um, we're coming up on a break. When yeah, we come back. We're going. To we will continue. be on a more upbeat. I promise. Yes, we will. Yes, I promise you. Talk this. more upbeat about how to handle disappointment. <laughs> You're listening yes. to, and that's when I realized. And we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. You're listening to And That's When I Realized. I'm Susan Dolce. I'm here with my bud, Leon Dyer. <clears throat> Today, we are talking about disappointment. 
Um, and we promised after before the before the break that we will not continue to be Debbie Downers talking about all the disappointments in our lives um, because we've um, I shouldn't say we Leon has researched uh, this topic and has come up with some um, steps, some guidelines to help us deal with disappointment in our lives. But one of the things we were talking about is um, how when we were growing up, how is disappointment handled in our family? And I know for me, it was sort of like a, it's just like, oh, well, <laughs> on to the next thing. And, but I remember, and we talked about this, you know, we always give a sticky note, a sticky note quote at the end of the show. And we talked about this one. I was like, no, because I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. like this. And it was, it, and I think it was Ben Franklin. I don't know why that's stuck in my head, but mm. I could be wrong, but he was, I, the phrase goes something like, if you never, um, if you, if you never expect anything, you'll never be disappointed. Right. Or if your <laughs> expectations are high or something. Yeah. Yeah. If you keep yeah. your expectations low, you'll never be low. disappointed. I'm right. Like, that's, yeah. That's, that's not good. I mean, why sh <laughs> shouldn't we have high expectations? Shouldn't we? I mean, I understand over expecting or, but I mean, shouldn't we have high expectations for ourselves and our families and our goals and our dreams and, you know, to like keep everything, um, you know, at a monotone sort of level in life, just so you're not going to be disappointed when the rug gets pulled out mm -hmm. from underneath you. That's just, <clears throat> that's just poor managing emotions. I think that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and disappointment, it, I think is defined as disappointment is um, expectation over reality. So it's the expectation, you know, versus the reality. And so I guess if you don't expect anything high, then you'll never be disappointed in reality. But then what, what's your goal? What's exactly. your aspirations? What, what, right, exactly. And I think disappointment is, I mean, we'll get to it, but I mean, I think it's disappointment is the, the expectation, the story we have in our head of what it's supposed to be, not necessarily what it sh can be. I was going to say should be, what it can be. So I'm going to go off on a tangent sure. <clears throat> that, that we haven't really talked about. Um, so, but I'm, I'm curious how to liken disappointment to failure. Like I was in some business training earlier today <clears throat> and um, uh, in the training, it was like, if you don't fail, you're not moving forward because every yeah. failure is propelling you to try a new idea or to push beyond, you know, a mm -hmm. limit or so I kind of feel like I'm sitting here thinking about that, that maybe disappointment offers us the same um, yeah. opportunity to instead of going down the hole, we can go through a door. Right, well, exactly. I mean, I think disappointment, I mean, failure is just an opportunity to learn. And I think how we process disappointment is how we experience um, the failures or the challenges we have in our life. Mm -hmm. So are we going to, um, if it's, if we're viewing it as a failure or like, whoops, so that didn't work. I guess I won't do that again. Is it a learning experience or are we, you know, packing up our stuff and going home because it didn't work? Oh, well, it didn't work. And I think that speaks more of how we view ourselves in this world, our worthiness in this world, our sense of, um, um, yeah, sense of worth is, comes in. Um, because I know there were aspects in growing up where I, you know, something happened and it was a disappointment or it didn't go the way we had expected. And I would get, well, it is what it is. Just move on. But then I would also get from other members of my family in other situations. Well, you know, what, did, what did you expect? You know, mm. did you expect it to be anything better? And so it, you know, and just knowing like the two sides of my family that were saying those two different things, it speaks of where they felt, how worthy they felt or how, um, how much they felt that they could receive 
in life. Mm -hmm. So I guess then the question is like for people who are always expecting disappointment around the corner, like they're not expecting their dreams or goals or wishes or Mm -hmm. to to happen. Um, And they're just so energetically, I'm sure that's also compromising the situation and creating more disappointment. Yeah. Well, I think they're putting it out there. Yeah. I mean, think about, I mean, if you, if you are expecting something like, okay, here's a perfect example. I'm very personal on my behalf. I have started or I'm done so many diets. I, I mean, forget it. I can't even list them all. We don't have enough time in the show, but in the back of my head, I knew, okay, I'm going to, I'll try it for at least a week. Let me see if I can make it a week. I'm already setting myself up. Okay. Mm-hmm. If I make it a week, woohoo. Now I am going to say <laughs> there was, that was the part of me when I did not feel that I should receive um, a good health or that I should mm-hmm. be open to receive what was best for me. I was sabotaging myself and I know that now. So I have successfully been able to um, stick to a plan that worked for me. But when you, when you set it up, you're, you're almost opening that door. You're you know, like, okay, disappointment or okay, failure. I'm here, I know I'm not gonna succeed, so. And then you get the disappointment or the failure. And it's like, yep, see, told you, mm-hmm. that's what's happening. So I think it's like what we put out there in the universe is what we're receiving all the time. So are we, I think you're, yeah, it's spot on, Susan, that are we putting out there, it's going to fail anyway, so might as well. Okay, let's look for the disappointment. Let's look for the, the failure. I'm thinking of, <clears throat> now it's coming back to me. I think I, I think I squashed it from my brain because I was so crushed. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> um, I applied to uh, oh, the living school I, at the yeah. Center for uh, Action and Contemplation. And I had waited several years to put in this application until uh, I you know, had, knew I had the time to devote to the program and it required travel. And I was finally an empty nester and I thought I can do this. And I was so excited. It never, <laughs> it didn't even occur to me that I would not get in. It didn't even, I was like so sure because mm-hmm. I, I had been following this. I wanted to do this for so long. I've read all their books. I know the whole, the, um, I know the curriculum. I know all of the faculty, you know, it's just like, and so when I didn't get in, I was like, what, what? <laughs> how, how does this happen? And, and because that was, that was going to put me on a whole different trajectory. Um, mm-hmm. And I guess, you know, God had a different plan for me because now I'm going in the direction I probably should have been going regardless with parent coaching and all that. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so, and you crossed that. I, I would do want to say you did while you were disappointed. I was very disappointed. And yeah, but you, you were able to like go deep inside, like what really happened? Like what's happening? Not like you have no clue why you were necessarily rejected from the program or not accepted from the program. I'm not, they didn't tell you, they just said, right. No, thank you for applying, but you're not one, (laughs) you know, but you had to go in and like, why did it mean so much to you? And what, why am I hung on this? And you were able to do that. Yeah. After a lot of tears. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's not going to happen. Yeah, of course. I mean, but it, but okay. But, but it so, happened. You didn't take it. You didn't take that and be like, oh, gee, see what a rejection. And you didn't, you know, like pack up your stuff and be like, oh, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to yeah. be like, okay, what am I supposed to be doing? So one of the questions you put on our notes, I want to ask Mm -hmm. you is you said, because I think this, and and we're coming up on another break, but is ignoring the emotion of disappointment, dealing with it constructively, or are we being delusional in our reality? Ignoring disappointment. Mm -hmm. So if we, I mean, well, I am a huge component on 
everything that is presented to us is either for our, is either a lesson for us to grow more or for us to embrace and enjoy. So if it if it doesn't, if it's not something we want to enjoy and embrace and hug and you know be like, oh, this is lovely, then obviously it's there and it's being presented to us as um, a um, opportunity for us to grow. Mm -hmm. So if we ignore it, then it's going to come that whatever lesson we were supposed to be learning is going to come back. So my, which, you know, which makes sense for the people who are always disappointed. Yes. Because just, the okay. lesson keeps yes. coming back and they just, oh, yes. and they just to keep ignoring exactly. it. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, that was exactly using my example of me being on a diet for, you know, like 20 years. Every January, okay, I'm doing it. I'd sign up for the program or I'd, you know, enlist in whatever. And, you know, and by January 15th, I'm like, yeah, that didn't work. Okay. I'll wait until next year, do another one. You know, I mean, I, because I wasn't going in, it had nothing to do with food right. that I was having to struggle with. And it wasn't until I actually dealt with what was happening that I was able to be successful. So yeah, the disappointment, for sure. <sighs> so one we of the are... things when we come back, oh, I'll go ahead, Susan, sorry. No, I was going to say, no, because I was going to take us in a break. What, what were you going to say? You can take us in oh, a break. It's... <laughs> no. Well, I was going to say, when we come back from our break, um, the first thing in order to help process disappointment is how we change the story, mm. how we change that story in our head of what it's supposed to be. See, now we're going to get to the good stuff and we're going to stop being Debbie good Downer. Stuff. So yes. <laughs> you're okay. listening to, and that's when I realized we're talking about disappointment in life today. Um, so I hope you stick with us. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. You're listening to, and that's when I realized I'm Susan Dolce. I'm hanging out again every, as second and fourth Thursday of the month with my friend, Leon Dyer. And we're talking about disappointment today um, and just how it impacts our lives. We've, I mean, this has been, we've had a few years of disappointment. Um, I don't think we can deny that. And we're gonna get into, before the break, we were talking about um, ways to manage disappointment and to not let it you know, rule your life. And one of the things that Leon said is like, you have to change the story. So we're gonna talk about five different um, uh, talking steps. points, steps, oh, yeah. Yeah. steps yeah. to how to manage disappointment in life. But I want to um, start with this quote from Tony Robbins, um, because I think this sort of sets up where we're going. Mm -hmm. And he says, when we embrace the true, no expectations, no disappointments, meaning we begin to live fully in the present. Our lives are filled with acceptance, gratitude, and love. We stop fighting things that are out of our control and focus our power on what we can control, our own mindset, emotions, and actions. Learning how to be happy without expectations means realizing that fulfillment comes from within. It's a realization that will transform your life. And again, that's Tony Robbins. And so what this, to me, this is like uh, also um, these five steps also work uh, for handling resentment. <laughs> Oh, a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so we're going to talk about resentment and disappointment. Woo. Yeah. Um, but so the first one is um, changing your story. Hmm. Change so the that? story. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, think, <clears throat> think about like we have, like, think about when we have an expectation in our mind, we're like, oh, you know, my husband and I are going to have this romantic evening, the kids on tier and, you know, it's going to be great. And then, you know, the story in our head is he's going to come home and he's going to be excited. The kid's on here and I cooked this wonderful meal. And then he walks to the door and he's exhausted. He just wants to like chill. He does, you know, I mean, and yeah. so he's like, you know, so the expectation was it's going to be romantic and it's going to be great. The reality of it is, yeah, we're just together. It's just, we're just sharing space. <laughs> So we get stuck, if we get stuck in that, that story, like, you know, oh, but it's supposed to be this way, or, um, 
I, if he's rejecting me, therefore I'm not wor worthy or what have I done wrong? It's, you know, all these things that go through our head or, you know, or, you know, a situation of where people are acting a certain way or they're saying things that are incredibly disappointing to hear or acknowledge. Mm -hmm. Our so, expectation is they're not supposed to be doing that. Yeah. So like it, with regards to the living school, um, uh, like I said, I just, I, my story was that I was getting in there because that's, I wanted it so badly. And I just figured, I don't know. I just it, thought that I was the perfect candidate. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in retrospect, when I, like you said, I did the work, one of the things I had to do was look at why did, why, why, why did I want to go to school there? Why did I want to be a part of living school? Mm -hmm. And it was really because um, the faculty is aging. I adore um, it's Richard Rohr, Cynthia Bourgeau, James Finley, there's others, but, and I was like, if I don't get into this, I want to be taught by them. I don't want to just read mm -hmm. their books. I want to be taught by them. And so it was all about me. It wasn't mm -hmm. about what was I going to do with, with what I was going, you know, to learn what was in the curriculum. And it was to take away and, and be of service in the future the energy of, of what I was, I was just so excited because I just wanted to go and be taught by them so badly. So then I was like, okay, <clears throat> that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was wrong. Um, because the whole program is um, when you graduate, they say you're being sent. And so you're supposed to go out into the world and do acts of service and, and stuff. And that's my energy was not that. And I didn't think about that until after they said, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> yeah yeah right that exactly yeah which falls right into the next step or the next um yeah the next step um which is take responsibility um which is changing the story and getting rid of the belief that we have whether it's you know and it can go both ways that you're entitled for something or that you're not worthy of something and mm -hmm. I'm both. Yeah. I mean, we <clears throat> I was the entitled. <laughs> you were, the, you were the unworthy. You're going down the unworthy thing. But well, yeah, I just no. I've had. I'm in, no, no, no. I mean, I have. I feel entitled. Like, like I'm thinking about like the group that I was, you know, talking about earlier, where they acted a certain way. I felt very entitled that please don't treat me that way. Mm -hmm. Don't treat me. Don't treat my family. Don't treat my loved ones. Don't treat you know, I had an entitlement that you are not going to treat us this way. Now that may have been taking, um, I may have been setting the boundaries of this is not acceptable. I mean, I, it could have been that, but I mean, I was feeling very entitled. You are not to treat me this way. And then I was disappointed that they continued to treat me that way, you know, or to treat the situation. So I think I did have entitlement and I, I think as I'm sitting here talking about it, I'm not sure I've completely processed. It's still a little fresh. It is still yeah. happening. Yeah. yeah. Still but disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, we, part of the research you did, um, entitlement did come up and can entitlement uh, lead to chronic disappointment because I, you believe that you, you are entitled to all of these things. And I mean, whoo. I think some of the well, younger generation. <laughs> well, it's interesting that both ends of the spectrum, not worthy, like I'm not worthy of this. So therefore I'm always disappointed and always being disappointed because you feel you're entitled to it. And guess what? <laughs> you're not, <laughs> you know? So it's interesting that both sides, but we know that when you feel entitled, it's, you're just masking your insecurities. So no. So first you change the story, change the story. Then you yeah. address the story. You have, what is the story? And then you take responsibility and look at it realistically. Um, I yeah. used to say uh, in my old podcast, three things I've learned. Um, if you change the story, you can change your, the world. Yeah. As you know, we all, we get stuck in the story. We believe that this is how life is supposed to be. We, um, we are clearly not present when we are stuck in the story. And that's one of the things I loved about that quote is that um, 
It says, when we embrace the true no expectations, no disappointments meaning, we begin to live fully in the present and our lives mm -hmm. are filled with acceptance, gratitude, and love. And we stop fighting the things that are out of our control. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think about how many things we try to have control of and over and how disappointed we are. It didn't work out that way. Um, yeah. I think every mother ever <laughs> has, has, has yeah. um, walked down that road of, yeah. I am not saying anything. Yes. Yeah. Now that's a... but, <laughs> which goes into that no one is perfect. No one's perfect. And that is step number three is forgiving, being able to acknowledge that everyone is on their journey and everyone is in their situation. So first we, yeah change the story, take responsibility for our part, but then. <sighs> so who are we forgiving? Forgive. Who are we, are we forgiving ourselves? Are we forgiving I, the people who disappointed us? Are we all of the above? Everything. I think, I think, yeah, all, <laughs> D, all. Um, I think forgiving that, forgiving ourselves for feeling, um, because once you, you know, you take responsibility in um, that we don't have control or we don't, um, we are not able to um, manipulate the situation, then it's, it's forgiving ourselves that we were in that position. And it's also being able to, you know, rise above the situation to see the situation or the person or whatever disappointed us that they're just on their journey as well. And the situation's just collided. Yeah. You had, okay, no. <laughs> no, talk to me, go no, ahead. This no, is I just, um, hmm. Well, because I'm, I'm I, again, I'm, I'm walking through the whole living school mm -hmm. scenario. Um, I, I don't feel like I, yeah, I felt like I needed to forgive myself for, um, uh, wow, for getting excited about it. <laughs> because it, it wasn't in my control. I, I mean, I put in my application, I spent hours and hours on the application, but it was, it wasn't in my control. And I, and I thought like, I, I sort of, I guess this is why it was so hard. I sort of did hand it over to the universe without any attachment to the outcome. I thought, apparently I had a huge attachment to the outcome. Um, but yeah, I think I had to forgive myself for, I forgave myself for being disappointed. Um, it was like, no, I should, maybe that's not right. I forgave myself for, yeah, for being disappointed, for being and being that overcome with emotion in the whole. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's okay. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to cry over this. It's okay yeah. to be disappointed. You know, you were really excited. And, mm -hmm. I, and I think that's just being true to my emotions um, and not pretending like, oh, it's fine it's fine. I didn't get in. Like I was, yeah. no, it wasn't fine. I was really upset. <laughs> and I was really, cause like I said that I had, I saw the, you know, I thought I knew where my future was going in regards to mm -hmm. taking these classes and being of service and all that. So, well, I think, and there are situations where life just, things happen. Yeah. Like you want to go out to dinner and you can't get into your favorite restaurant. It's no one's fault. It's not, you know, I mean, there's no, it's no fault. It's just life happens. So, you know, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I think the forgiveness, like if you're disappointed, the forgiveness is um, letting go of the story that that was going to be the pivotal change mm. that you had to hold on to. That's what was going to make everything wonderful was this dinner. You know, I mean, I, that we're yeah. just okay. Yeah, I get it. So change your story, yeah. take responsibility, forgive. We're going to get to the second, the, I mean, the fourth and fifth yep. step. When we, <laughs> when we come back, we're going to take another quick break. You're listening to, and that's when I realized, and we'll be right back. Hey, we are back. You're listening to, and that's when I realized I'm Susan Dolce. Again, I'm here. We are here every second and fourth Thursday at four Eastern. I'm here with my bud, Leon. We talk about the truth and comedy of midlife, but today 
we are talking about disappointment specifically. Yes. And um, we spent the first had few, a few in our in our lives. Yeah. yeah, by the time you get to our age, you've had some disappointments. Um, and uh, we spent the first two segments being total Debbie Downers and talking about all the disappointments in our life, and especially about how, uh, believe it or not, people, 2022 is only four months away, if that surprises you as much as it surprised me. Um, so, so we were talking about how to deal with disappointment. Mm. So we're not just going to talk about disappointment and not give y'all some tips to manage it. And so there are five steps we've been going through. And this is, um, this is, uh, from an article on Tony Robbins website, I believe. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, so it starts with changing your story. Mm -hmm. Don't believe the story. Take responsibility. So I think it's actually, it's since change your story, it's like recognize the story that you're in the story, then take responsibility and change the story. That's the way I look okay. at it. And then right. three is forgive. And we were debating who, are we forgiving ourselves? Are we forgiving the people who disappointed us, the situation that disappointed us? Um, I think it, you know, whatever, whatever fits your situation. <laughs> and number four, this is my favorite, because this also is um, the cure for resentment. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also the cure for anxiety attacks in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> And that's to be grateful. Be grateful. Yeah. Just to, that, yeah. I mean, that joy just doesn't happen, you know, and it happens when we are able to receive it. And yeah. Yeah. So be grateful. Um, uh, gratitude. Gratitude is like a, healing balm as far as I look at it it's like whenever that's why I said it even works for anxiety attacks in the middle of the night it's like just fo not focusing on um again not focusing on the story and just being in the moment and taking stock of all of the blessings in in our lives mm -hmm. even the, even the smallest things it's just um I I do um I am a, I actually wrote a blog post about this in the way back machine, but it was, um, it was like three, <laughs> three red letter words to say, um, not to say, and it's like, don't say, um, well, at least. Mm. So like mm. if somebody's really disappointed, disappointed mm -hmm. or somebody, you know, you know, well, at least it's not blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. So I highly recommend you avoid <laughs> those three words because what it does is it diminishes the person's uh, um, feelings and the situation that they're in to like say, well, oh, it could be worse. It could be, you know, it's not cancer or, you know, it's not that that's, and that's not the point. The person who's going through whatever disappointment or emotions, they're entitled to feel whatever the hell they're feeling as far as I'm concerned. But are they, are they trying to have you feel more grateful to have more gratitude that it wasn't X, Y, and Z? That yes. it was just this. Yeah. But, but I still think that those are trigger words just to. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. But you can, you know, so you can still. You but know. whenever. I, I think when you put that out there, well, at least it wasn't this, then that becomes the, the pivotal, like, oh, you're right. Thank goodness. Ooh, it wasn't that. But then what happens to the situation that's actually happening? Mm-hmm. You kind of like dismiss it. Right. right. Which isn't the point. So, I mean, of... you, can, you can, you can point people to gratitude without saying, yeah, at least it's not. <laughs> or, or, or feel it yourself. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, and go ahead. No, I was going to, I was going to the last, the last step yeah. after we feel grateful um, is just to see life as a journey. Um which is practicing gratitude um, and that we're all on this journey together and each moment or each lesson is there for us to grow wider and stronger. Well, and that goes back to you. I mean, when we start, where we started with this is that um, disappointments are just, and, and or failure um, are opportunities or lessons for us to, to grow to, like I said, you can either go down the hall or you can go through the door. Um, and I, love that. I, I, I also like to look at disappointments a lot of times as like, uh, divine intervention, <laughs> mm. 
Um, how many times have you been behind somebody who's driving insanely slow? Granted, this isn't disappointment, but, and, and you're like, I have got to be somewhere. And this person is driving 30 miles in a 40 mile an hour zone. And I can't, I can't deal. And then I will say to myself, this person is protecting me from some harm that I might've gotten into. Mm -hmm. Like, you're like, there's a reason why this person is driving so slowly in front of me. So I'm just going to appreciate whatever's happening in the moment and just uh, that, that they are driving so slowly. But do you get my point? Like, yeah, there's those times I, like we're a disappointment or something's like the rug is pulled out underneath you. And then you think that that, like, again, I go back to living school. I was sure that was my life was headed that way and it didn't happen. And now I'm a parent coach, which is totally my jam, which I totally yes. love doing. And I probably wouldn't have even explored that had I gotten into the living school. Right. So you would have been there at the living school, just sucking it all up, loving it, loving it, loving it. You would have come back and given to the world because that's who you are. But look what, I mean, now look what you're doing. I mean, this just speaks of like, what you're doing now is Susan. I mean, it's giving to the mothers and, and everything. So yeah. See, so yeah, so see life as a journey and that's kind of- Life like, is a journey. Yeah, so every disappointment is for a reason. Maybe not all of them. So, yeah, maybe all of them. Maybe not the romantic dinner one, but <laughs> maybe that's just exhaustion and, and tired. And, yes, yeah. right. So we always close the show because uh, if you don't, if you haven't listened to us before, um, Leon is the queen of the sticky note. And Love my sticky notes. <laughs> she, if you can't see um, from her view right now, but her computer is surrounded with sticky notes sticky of, notes. of a variety of colors. Um, oh yeah. And so we say that we, you know, life didn't come with an instruction book, uh, but we can give you some advice one sticky note at a time. So mm. today's quote is, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. And that's Martin Luther King Jr. Never lose infinite hope. Never lose. I love that. Yeah. And that's, boy, that is like the perfect takeaway for the end of, or as, as we approach the end of 2021, the last quarter. Yeah. That could have been cannot, 2022. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can never lose infinite <laughs> hope. Right. No. And so many things are happening too. I mean, just, yeah, with the world, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, so yeah, thanks for ahead. hanging out with us today. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about disappointment. And um, I always like to close the show with this little reminder that your age is just the number of years the world has been enjoying you. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next time. Leon. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being here with us today on And That's When I Realized. We are here to shed some light on the misconceptions around midlife by sharing real life stories and a fresh perspective. Look, we know it's not easy, but change is constant and inevitable. Let's explore what it means to move through challenges with a dose of humor and embrace each challenge, each new discovery with a higher sense of understanding. We hope you heard something today that made you laugh and recognize the truth and comedy of midlife. See you next time.